highly selective um, assessment. And 10 minutes, uh, the flap was sutured back into place. Okay. This is a typical control animal. This is uh, distal. Oops, come here. <laughs> distal here, the head is here, the tail is here. Um, the red means good perfusion, blue means poor perfusion. And that's at one minute, five minutes, and ten minutes in the control, unirradiated animals. And you can see the blood flow is very poor in the flap. And when we compare with the irradiated, a typical irradiated animal, we found the blood flow was significantly higher, p-value of 0 0.001. We then followed the animals out to five days post-op, and you can see necrotic area, is much larger in the unirradiated animal and the survival area was significantly better in the treated animal, p value of 0 0.01, so significantly higher. And uh, the conclusion was that irradiated flaps with 830 nanometers had enhanced blood flow and this positively affected the survival of the flap. Now if the animals had been treated 24 hours before, it would have been even better. You know, the result would have been even better. It's called preemptive LLLT. Here is a control, another, another different animal model, and this was done with heel light. Um, identical burn injuries were created on the dorsa of rats using a, a fractional CO2 laser. So all the wounds were exactly the same. Um, 830 was applied to the abdomen of the animals, not the wounds, and they were held under uh, a screen so that no light could be reflected back into the wounds from the treatment table. This is post burn day six in controls. Now remember these are normal wounds, they are healing, they are healing properly, they are not abnormal, but when we look at the state of healing on the LED treated animal which were not directly irradiated, the abdomens were treated you can see significantly better healing. And when we look at the statistics, we find that for the control animals, some were still in 26 to 50% healing, none was completely healed. But when we look at the LED animals, we find that all of them are better than 70% healed, and many of them were 96 to 100% healed through indirect irradiation, the systemic effect important to remember. Here's another example of the systemic effect. This is um, a 19-year-old cerebral palsy patient. So did the beam penetrate through the mouth, through the rat, or them in that case? Or you say it was just a systemic effect? No, it's a s systemic effect. I mean, obviously, um, with the organs, the viscera in between, it would be quite hard irradiating the abdomen to get any uh, reasonable irradiation at the back, but there may have been some. It wasn't measured. It's a good point. Right, this, this is a cerebral palsy patient. At the moment he's in tonic spasm, and this is fine plate thermography. You can see very cool areas on his lower extremities. He was treated only on the chest, uh, six, 60 joules per square centimeter across the chest, and this is two minutes after a single treatment. Uh, his feet are still in spasm. Ten minutes after treatment you can see significant warming occurring throughout the legs and at 30 minutes after treatment there's total body warming and he can flex, active flexion of his feet. So his feet have come out from tonic spasm. This, this, is, this is called the athetotic type of cerebral palsy and 830 uh, irradiation stops the athetosis. The hands move like that. They're not controlling it. It's athetotic. It's done from within. So this shows systemic effect, particularly on the parasympathetic system, you know, our rest and relax system. Right, move on to the clinical indications. How are we doing for time? We're doing okay. Acne. Right, we all know acne is a bugbear. 
it occurs up to 100% in adolescents, and if we don't treat it, it turns into acne scars, which are worse than acne, because they, they're for life. Colonization, the evil bacterium is Propionibacterium acnes, and it blocks follicles, finds a nice warm, dark place, and colonizes. Now, we all have P. acnes on our skin all the time, all the time. It's very important. It eats sebum. It lives on sebum. So it actually helps keep sebum levels of healthy skin down, but give it a warm, dark hole to live in. <laughs> and we get the vicious circle. And the vicious circle is interesting because the P. acnes is very clever. It brings in antigens and T cells, and it changes the T cells because the T cells come rushing in to deal with the inflammation. But the P. acnes reaches out and tweaks the membranes of the T cells and they become rogue T cells that have gone to the dark side. <laughs> and they start helping create inflammation instead of healing it. And this, above anything else, is what makes acne such a difficult problem. Because you can deal with the inflammation, you can deal with the P. acnes, but you can't deal with the rogue T cells, and they remain there, lurking, waiting to do something. So we have two ways of looking at treatment. We can treat with uh, endogenous PDT, with the porphyrins which are endogenous to P. acnes, which will absorb particular wavelengths of light. And we get ROS, reactive oxygen species, singlet oxygen, and that produces cellular oxidative stress and the cell goes into apoptosis and dies within 48 to 72 hours. And it happens in nanoseconds, five nanoseconds. So it's completely contained within the P. acnes. Athermal but selective damage. And then we have photon absorption therapy, which is what we've been talking about all the time up to now. Direct exchange of energy from photons to cells, lifting them to the high energy level, so we get cellular repair, better function, and cellular proliferation. Okay, we agree we need to attack P. acnes because it's the causative pathogen. And how do we attack it? Well, we look at the porphyrins inherent in P. acnes, and we find two, protoporphyrin 9, and coproporphyrin-3. And when we look at their action spectrum, we see this wonderful peak at 450 nanometers. 410 is okay, but it's way off the peak because it's a very, very sharp peak. It's a logarithmic curve on the left. Therefore, if we have enough blue light at 415, we're going to kill the P. acnes and get endogenous PDT. So in comes the blue light. It attacks the P. acnes but it doesn't attack the rogue T cells and although it will shrink the inflammation because it's taken away the P. acnes, it doesn't cure the inflammation. So we still have a problem. Acne is multifactorial, as we heard from Dr. Moy this morning. Inflammatory, immunological, hormonal, stress. There are many, many factors which contribute to acne, but all of it we find this little uh, immuno-incompetent problem. So 633 or 830 are the optimum wavelengths for this approach. So we combine the 415 and we wait for a couple of days and then we treat with either the red or the infrared because that wavelength, red and infrared, will very efficiently deal with the T-cells and also with the inflammation, leaving behind nice normal skin. Now there are some studies. Yes? So I was just going to say, so do you, with, with the 633 and the 830, is it better to just irradiate the actual traumatised skin or lymphodes? Um, everywhere, everywhere, all over the face, because um, we, we rely on cells outside the area helping to normalise the cells within the area. This is a study uh, with the blue and the red. David Goldberg is a well-known dermatologist from the States, New York, and Bruce Russell is a dermatologist in, um, whatever he is, <laughs> Ontario. 
And this was published in the Journal of Cosmetic Laser Therapy. 22 subjects, Burton grades 2 to 5. Uh, they were treated alternately with blue and then two days later with red. Four weeks, so eight treatments. 82% at 12 weeks post-treatment, which was highly significant. Marked reduction also in pore size and patients noted that sebum production was also cut down and no damage to the sebaceous gland. So this was the reduction of inflammatory lesions. The interesting thing is that at four weeks, there was only about 50% reduction, but this continued to improve. And this is all part of the information and education process for patients. This is light-only therapy. They weren't allowed to do anything else to their skin except wash it with hypoallergenic soap. So this is light only that got this 82% reduction, and that was on average. So some patients were actually at 100%, and some patients were at 60 or 70%. So it varies from patient to patient, depending on the acne. This is a 73% reduction, 12 weeks. Here we have a little darker skin, 6 weeks, and cystic acne, 8 weeks after the final treatment <coughs> session. And this led on to uh, 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 another paper from Sen Young Lee in Korea. Um, and it was published in Lasers in Surgery and Medicine. Same again, 24 patients, but the same, uh, the same treatment sequel. And she used, in addition to lesion count, she also used mexameter and sebometer levels. So she was doing some... Uh, objective uh, measurements in addition to just the lesion counts. She followed up for eight weeks because it was a time problem with the clinic uh, instead of 12 weeks. But at eight weeks, she got nearly 78% clearance. But the mexameter showed significant skin lightening. And um, Asian patients like lighter skins. Asian ladies like to have lighter skin. So this was a bonus with this study to show that we got significant skin lightening. That was the Goldberg-Russell clearance. This was her clearance, Dr. Lee's, and she got 60%. But then again, she had many more patients in Burton grade 4 and 5. So more severe acne, we could say, responds better to light therapy than less severe acne. So 78% at eight weeks, if she extrapolated that beyond the eight weeks, she would, what would have got, and indeed get, did get, 100%. One of her baseline, and eight weeks after the final treatment. And this is an interesting one, because you can see uh, these remaining inflammatory uh, little nodule things underneath the lesion. This is just wound healing occurring under a thinned epidermis. And when you allow this to thicken up, or when you encourage it to thicken up with some more 830 or 633, you get rid of these little red marks. Any questions on acne? Yes? Were all of those results based on just the blue? Blue and red. So blue and red. Blue and red, yes. Both papers were blue on one day and 48 hours later red. Four weeks, twice per week. Combination with ALA or metfix? No, not, not in this study, but there have been studies which show uh, very good effect in one treatment session, uh, activating the ALA, not with blue, but with red. So you would choose to do this alone, or you would speed up and get their clearance? With I think it would depend on the patient's requirements. I mean, some patients come in, I have a wedding in four weeks, and I'd like my acne treated, so that would be a case for the ALA, because it's painful. You know, the activation phase is not pleasant. It's painful, and they end up with a little downtime, three or four days when their face is red. This is a very encouraging result. Do you find that still some people go on to Arachitane as well, whatever you do, and that's going to happen? Do you think that you can pretty much... Well, I, in, in these two studies, uh, some of the patients were on Roaccutane, and there was an eight-week clear out, wash out, and none of them went back to Roaccutane afterwards. Okay. So they were off Roaccutane for eight weeks and then they had the light therapy? Uh, c correct, yes, yes, eight week washout. Yeah. It, um, 
the, the literature suggests that eight weeks is sufficient. It's, it's, it's from the photosensitizing viewpoint rather than a total washout, okay. right? as long as it doesn't cause any photosensitive reaction. And in every case, we always do a little test treatment just to make sure that there is no photosensitivity left. And with the jewels, we were talking about the near infrared and, and the red um, working out to be 20 minutes with the red. What about the blue? With the blue, um, it's 20 minutes okay. because the, the blue is actually much, much lower uh, uh, intensity because blue photons are more powerful than visible light photons or infrared photons. So we have to consider the, the, the power of the individual photon, but it's still 20 minutes, but it's not 60 joules per square centimeter, it's 45. 45 the blue. For the blue. And more isn't always better. No, no. You can give more, you will get a little bit of improvement, but is it worth the time? You know, uh, I know there are <coughs> patients, clients who really like their, their treatment and they come in and come in and come in and come in, that doesn't harm them. It will do them good as long as there's a period for the skin cells to react in between. And, and extending it beyond the 20 minutes isn't going no, to help? No, no, no. It may help slightly, okay. right? but it won't be dramatic. Lady, lady at the back. Um, the first treat for the blue light and then two days post for the red, is that correct? I'm sorry, once again? Uh, so you use the blue light first and two days after the red. What blue light to kill the piagnes and the red light to kill the inflammation and bring down the uh, autoimmune The rotation. Yeah. What if you have clients that don't want to do that? So maybe one of the clients are not really wanting to come in for those, you know, they want to stay in one hit, so you just really have to explain to them. That you have to explain. And why do we not do them together? Because the red light will try and rescue the P acnes. Yeah, so it kind of defeats the object. Yeah, that's why we wait two days. Um, two questions. One, will there be a handheld device that is going to... There will be. Yes. Yes. Soon? It's already developed in Korea and under testing. Excellent. And the second question is, I saw that there is a new LED technology um, in the market for the body. Um, oh, yeah, whole body irradiation. Yes. <coughs> well, we've looked at that and there are a number of problems. Um, first of all, a lot of these whole body things that are out use the I am a flashing light principle. Right? So they're not really you know, delivering the optimum wavelength for the optimum time. If we had really good quality LEDs for the whole body, there would be an enormous problem in cooling. Not cooling the LEDs, but cooling the drivers for the LEDs. The driving, you know, the driver circuitry. So that, these are two huge problems if we use good quality LEDs. But we are not convinced that the whole body approach uh, 